Hello there, my fellow space fighter pilots, and welcome back to another lore video on the war machines of Battletech. War machines which are not battle mechs, that is. Today we shall indulge in a second video on the aerospace fighters of the setting, with a natural progression from the light variant to the medium variants today. Do stay until the end too, and vote on a future space fighters topic. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first fighter for today is known as the Ammon. A bit of an oddity, the ground-focused attack Ammon is the first new second-line clan aerospace fighter design in more than a century. Developing new manufacturing plants to assist in solidifying their control of Barcella, it was Clan Diamond Shark that produced a number of existing battle mech designs, as well as, surprisingly, a new second-line fighter. Their mission was to help take the strain off their own frontline forces in their efforts to force Clans Ice Hellion and Jade Falcon off-world. While looking mainly to the needs of their own Tumen, the mercantile band of the Sharks led them to sell surplus production to several other clans and sell the full design specifications of the efficient and cost-effective fighter to the clans Ghost Bear and Coyote. Befitting its second-line role, and to speed development and construction, outside of the 20 double heatsinks, the Yaman utilizes no advanced structural components. The fighter sacrifices speed and uses a 250-rated fusion engine to free up enough space for 14 tons of armor and quite an impressive weapons array. Developed primarily for its ground attack role, the Ammon's main weapons are a trio of nose-mounted ER Lodge lasers, supported by a Type 6 Streak SRM-6 fitted to each wing. With enough heatsinks to fire almost continuously, the Ammon's strafing runs are legendary, ably supported by the Streak launchers, allowing maximum efficiency with a single ton of reloads. Almost as an afterthought, just one ER small laser is mounted at the rear, mainly to discourage pursuit until the pilot can bring the main guns to bear. The second aircraft for today is the Aquila. The Aquila was designed in the first years of the 32nd century, being a joint project between the Oriente Protectorate and the Rim Commonality. This project, leading to the building of the Aquila, had the goal of developing a fast, long-range aerospace fighter, which could hit with great accuracy. Taking advantage of its long-range arsenal, the Aquila was used in the role of a sniper, conducting attacks against targets that were unescorted like small craft and dropships. After being made in 3104, the fighter would first see action in 3105, during the Victoria War against the Capellans. The fighter made a name for itself as part of the Protectorate Defense Force protecting the world of Shu and Wan. Then, unknown to the Confederation, the fighters were able to engage the invaders at a very long range. While just one fighter of the responding squadron survived the encounter, it did help convince the enemy forces to withdraw from Shu and Wan. The best qualities of the Aquila are its speed and long range firepower. Its frame is armored by 11 tons of Arc Shield 9 ferro aluminum, giving the fighter some reasonable armor protection from incoming fighters. However, the Aquila's true defense is its great speed, as it is able to move with thrust upwards of 11 Gs due to a Hermes 275 rated extra light fusion engine. The signature weapons making this fighter stand apart from pretty much any other are twin nose-mounted light Gauss rifles, which have been allotted 3 tons of ammo. Backing up the Gauss rifles are a pair of diverse optics ER medium lasers, one of these mounted on each wing. The third of today's topics is the Firebird. Now, despite carrying a very beautiful name, the Firebird is kind of a sad case. It was built on Capella as a very early Age of War era aerospace fighter design. It was underpowered and lightly armored, and it did not fulfill the expectations of the CCAF. Although it carried enough fuel to achieve good velocity in space, it was not maneuverable. 
Its low speed and sluggish handling in atmospheric flight, combined with its weak rear armor and lack of aft-mounted weapons, made it very easy prey for pretty much any conventional fighter. With the rapid development of aerospace technology, the Firebird quickly became obsolete and was taken out of service and scrapped in 2420. The Torian Concordia then used some of these captured in the Rim War, but also retired them in 2437. Realizing that their design cannot handle dogfights, the developers equipped it with long-range weapons to stay as far away from the enemy as possible. Two Zeus LRM-10 launchers mounted in the wings, and an Imperator D light autocannon in the nose, each with one ton of ammo, did meet those requirements and gave it a potent punch for whatever little amount of time it actually served. The fourth aerospace fighter of today is the Lancer. The Lancer is one of the products of the post-clan invasion naval technology renaissance in the Free World League, being an advanced aerospace fighter design that saw most action as a dropship escort or as a warship-based reconnaissance craft. It was Gutierrez Aerospace that put their decade of experience with producing the stopgap F-94 Stingray to good use. They designed the testbed LX-1 to validate the new design and new technology, with the production model LX-2 entering service after a four-year development in 3064. Although it was not as cutting-edge as the Shiva Omnifighter, for example, the Lancer was still a formidable aircraft. Hailed as a dream to fly by the pilots, and simplicity to maintain by the ground crew. It was a light and agile fighter that integrated flight and weapon systems, the heart of the aircraft being the 250 rated fusion engine with 5 tons of fuel, capable of driving the Lancer at high speeds at low level. A nose mounted LRM 10 launcher provides the Lancer's principal long range firepower. The same weapon carried by the Stingray with the addition of an Artemis IV fire control system. It also had a large pulse laser on each wing providing medium range firepower. While it did carry an advanced and well rounded weapons array for its size, the Lancer was hampered by carrying just one ton of LRM ammo, with bombs or external pods greatly degrading the fighter's performance. The fifth fighter for today is the exotically named Persepolis. The Persepolis was first encountered in late 3085, as a second-line clan aerospace fighter developed by clan Jade Falcon. This was first developed unknown to the military intelligence of the Inner Sphere until a pirate band attempted to raid Sudeton. The Persepolis was the first product of the Falcon's new orbital space factory, known as the Falcon's Roost. The fighter has seen deployment to nearly all of Clan Jade Falcon's second and frontline units, with the exception of its elite formations. The Persepolis is geared towards fighting standoff engagements, using its ER large lasers and its 20-tubed Streak LRMs. Each of the launchers has allotted 2 tons of ammo, while the Streak technology prevents wasted shots. In closer range, the fighter's brace of improved heavy, medium, and small lasers add to the Persepolis firepower and finish off an opponent. However, flaws in the Falcon's manufacturing process sometimes causes these weapons to explode. Introduced in 3134, the Persepolis II has two nose-mounted ER large lasers, two nose-mounted improved heavy-medium lasers, and another two aft-mounted improved small lasers for rear defense. The weapons are tied into a targeting computer. Each wing also carries a single LRM-20 with an Artemis V fire control system. The armor was also replaced by ferrolamellar armor, which greatly reduces damage from enemy weapons. The sixth and final aerospace fighter for today is known as the Rondel. The Rondel was introduced by Greenock Aero Manufacturing Limited of Fergrove in the decade prior to the Victoria War between the Capellans and the Federated Sons. The Rondel was a workhorse medium weight fighter, although not one that was produced in particularly great numbers. 
although the Rondo lacked the main heavy weapons of many of its competitors, and initial production runs initially went to mercenaries and planetary militias, it would be a large production order issued by the Capellan March Militia in 3112 which brought the Rondel to the field of battle in greater and greater numbers. It can perform equally well in the atmosphere and in space. Capable of strafing with the wing-mounted weapons, or carrying substantial bomb loads on bombing missions. It only mounts a single Mydron Tornado Rotary Class 5 autocannon in the nose, supplied by three tons of ammo. Each wing of the Rondel also mounts a trio of diverse optics ER medium lasers. So, today's poll is gonna be really straightforward, with a pure focus on more aerospace fighters. So, which one would you like to see in this topic? Option A, more light fighters. Option B, more medium fighters. Or option C, some heavy fighters. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these medium-class aerospace fighters for today. I keep saying this in most vehicle videos, but of course these are not the only medium fighters in the setting. Were you aware of any of these designs? Did you ever use them in your games or fought against them? I very much welcome any of your thoughts, opinions or stories on the matter, so do feel free to share them in the comments below. If you thought the episode was informative or entertaining, please consider clicking the like, subscribe and share buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.